at the time I was introduced to ceramics in a not very good class, uh, I was doing very hard-edged painting, uh, pseudo-mondrions, that sort of thing, working with a, a ruler and T-square and painting and drawing as accurate as possible. And suddenly I was introduced to a material where, you know, you, you pushed it and, and you had your, your handprint in it and everything you did with your hands was transferred into something on the clay. This suddenly uh, changed my whole idea, and and I I became fascinated with with the idea of a, a more malleable material, and suddenly it was much more exciting than than painting to me. The high school I went to uh, had a very good art department, and that's where I really got involved in, uh, in art as, as a career. And uh, I was determined that I was going to be an artist, and uh, uh, my parents, of course, thought that was a disaster. <laughs> Earning a living as an artist is a, a bit shaky, you'd say, but uh, I thought I was going to be the world's greatest painter, you know, and I was going to have no trouble selling my work. But I, I wasn't that good, really, as a painter. Uh, I found that out when I tried for a scholarship at the Chicago Art Institute. I didn't get the scholarship, but uh, uh, with the support of my uh, teacher from high school, who told my parents that I was going to go on and do something in art, no matter what they said. Uh, they agreed to finance the first year in school, and so I went to the Art, art Institute as a painting student.
We had a, an old-fashioned wind-up Victrola. And somehow my brother and I found out that, um, that if you wound it up as tight as it would go, and then just kept winding, you, you were driving the wheel. I'd get my brother on the, on the wheel, and I'd put some clay on the, on the Victrola turntable and try to make pots. And of course, you can imagine, you got water going down around the wheel and so on. It dropped into the case below the Victrola, which also contained old uh, wet cell batteries that ran the radio that was connected to this thing. When my mother found out about that, why, uh, we caught hell for it. So, nothing we can do. <laughs> I'm just looking at this one pot here and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I, when I think, you know, when you're when you're a painter, I, and I used to try and be a painter, you know, when I was a student, uh, you you work on the same painting, and and all, and you putz with it, and you move it, and you change it, and you emphasize something, and you subdue something until you get it the way you want it. But you can only work so long on a pot, and then you gotta, it's done. And uh, you can make your decision, however, and just wad it up and, and make it again, and that, that's what I, I did there. I, that, that just was not, not right. Got out of the army. I thought I was going to go back to the Art Institute and pick up on my painting classes, of course. And uh, so I went to school, and uh, they said, "Well, yeah, but you know, there's no room in the painting classes." So I said, "Well, what classes are open?" And they said, "Well, um, look down the list. There's room in the ceramic class." And so I said, "Okay, I'll take ceramics." And I figured that would get me back into school and then I could pick up on my painting classes when they opened up. So I started uh, taking ceramics. The instructor, uh, she, uh, she, had, she didn't know how to throw on the wheel. It was not a very good ceramic class. About halfway through that first semester, uh, one of the students in the class discovered a book by Bernard Leach called A Potter's Book. And they came rushing into class saying, hey, this is a much better thing in this book than what we're doing, than what Leach writes about. And he talked about the way he had learned ceramics uh, in Japan and how he and Hamada, his friend, had come to England and started a pottery there. And he talked about things to consider in making a pot, uh, which would make it expressive. Uh, the only thing was it got us going on things that we shouldn't have had got on to. For instance, he said, any person should be able to throw 50 pots a day with no problem. So we would sneak into class when the instructor was not there, and we would get on the potter's wheels uh, where we had had no instruction, and we would try to make pots on the potter's wheels. And we would try to make them rapidly and easily and somehow expressively. Well, of course, we got into all sorts of trouble for that. I almost got kicked out of school, I know, but uh, okay. it did get us started on something.
It was at that time that I, I, I met my future wife, Alex, and, and uh, we both got into ceramics by accident, but we were both fascinated with it and both convinced that uh, the things that interested us were the things that people had used in their everyday life. The Minge, I, I, don't, I don't know the direct translation of it, but essentially it's, it's the people's crafts. And that includes uh, pottery, weaving, metalwork, uh, wood carving, doll making, uh, all, all kind of paper making, all those things which are done throughout the country. And they're, they're done by people who are, they don't think of themselves as artists, they think of themselves the same way that a, an auto mechanic who fixes your car thinks of it. It's a job. And uh, that's, that's what Minge came from. And Yanagi, Seetsu Yanagi in Japan, who was not a craftsperson, he was a philosopher, and he was the person who, along with Hamada and Leach and Kawai, and other people who were craftspeople uh, started this idea of the Minge, which was to alert the public to the beauty that they had around them without having to think you, you, you go and you find, you know, a high-class artist to, to find your beauty. It, it's there. That was the thing that attracted uh, Alex and I to the Menge because when we were art students and, and went to, to the museums, we found that all the pots that attracted us were the pots that people had used in their homes. That doesn't mean they were the best pots, but it means they were the kind of pots which attracted our attention. And so we finally, uh, when we got out of school, we said, well, you know, if that's the kind of pots that really interest us, why that's the kind of pots we should try to make. And, uh, uh, and we, we always, always did try to make that kind of pot, a pot to be used in the home for whatever purpose and uh, uh, sold as inexpensively as possible. And uh, this was something which Leach was doing in England with his pottery, which he set up with Soji Hamada, and he was making everyday pots be sold at very low prices. We uh, had written to Leach and we said we would like to uh, come and discuss with him being apprentices in his workshop. And uh, we went to uh, England, and we took examples of our work, and of course, uh, <laughs> Bird had looked at this work, and he said, "Well, I'm sorry, we're full up. <laughs> There's no room for you, <laughs> because th these were terrible pots." So we said, "We have this room for two weeks." Do you mind if we come up to the pottery every day and at least learn as much as we possibly can while we're here? He said, no, that's fine. He encourages us to do that. And so every day we traipse up the hill. It's a long hill from the, the harbor up to the, the uh, where the pottery was, and uh, we'd spend the, the day up there uh, and uh, asking questions and watching the other people work and uh, everything that was going on, and we learned a lot that way. At the end of the two weeks, 
they were firing their large uh, kill. They had a big three-chambered oil-fired kill. And Leach, at that point, was still uh, sitting a kill watch. It was our next to last day. He said, uh, do you want to come up and talk with me at that time? We we'd just discussed things. And um, we said, of course we did. And we sat talking to Leach from 1 o'clock until 8 o'clock in the morning. And we didn't talk about POTS, which was the interesting thing. We talked about uh, the environment. We talked about sociology. We talked about politics. We talked about anything except pottery. We never, and we thought he was going to, you know, find out what we knew about pottery. And uh, anyway, at the end of the... Uh, seven or eight hours that we spent with him, he said, well, I've changed my mind, and if you want to come back uh, a year from now, uh, uh, we can fit you into the pottery. <laughs>